Bruchim Aboyim. Thank you for coming. We are um, on the week just before Rosh Hashanah. And the lecture today, interestingly enough, is going to be 2018. And the reason why I chose it, 2018 is a very propitious time. I'm, uh, again, this is based on my thoughts, and these are my thoughts, based upon a lot of different prophecies and things that I've studied, and just looking at the world. 2018, it's really, really a question, why are, we count, why are we counting the years of a Christian calendar? Um, really doesn't make sense. It's really not the year 2018. And somehow we follow this, and the whole world follows this Christian calendar, which is strange. Now we know that the first 2,000 years of creation were without Torah. That's when God brought the flood, the uh, generation of uh, Anosh of idol worship, where he destroyed a third of the world then. Again, the world was destroyed with the flood, generation of dispersion. And the world didn't fare very well without Torah, without godliness in the world. So if someone says, you know, we really don't need religion, we really don't need God, we really don't need order. So we point to the first 2,000 years of creation, and we say, see what happens without it. The second 2,000 years were the 2,000 years of Torah. And this last 3,000 years, we believe that the world can only exist until the year 6,000. And the last 2,000 years are the time of the Messiah of Mashiach. Now, the world is a dangerous place. There's no question about it. You have Iran, you have North Korea, China, and some say definitely Russia. And, but that doesn't really concern me as much. I remember being a kid in the 50s growing up, and we'd be under our desk. The Cold War was frightening to a child. And I remember thinking to myself that I would never grow up. I would never get married. I would never have children. I would never live a life. That the world was going to end and I was going to die. Well. It's been 60 years or more since then, and I'm still around. The world didn't end. The world has always been a dangerous place of sorts. So what's so different now? So nuclear power, it's easier for people to do it. You have crazy people, North Korea. You have religious zealots in Iran. People don't get it. They really don't get the fact that the Iranians would gladly push the button because they believe, as we do, in the Messiah and the Mashiach. And Armageddon is fine. They believe in that. To a civilized American, he just doesn't understand that. Because why would someone do that? They don't understand that zealotness that exists in the Middle East. Most people are not going to strap a, b a bomb on and be a suicide bomber. It's just not what they're going to do. They may shoot someone, but to kill themselves in the name of any belief is very difficult. It takes a zealot to do, and that's what the world has. The world is full of zealots. Woe to the world where the zealots come together. So yeah, it's a dangerous place. But it's not just that. It's all the ingredients coming together. So again, so why follow the Christian calendar? So the first 2,000 years of creation, there was no Torah. There was godliness really was not in existence. Abraham, who was the first person not to believe in God, but the first person to really spread monotheism throughout the world. He was an evangelist. He went around trying to get people to know that there's a God and to see God in the world. Now, what's interesting is that he was born in the year 1948 of creation. Nothing in the world is an accident. And in the year 1948, in our calendar, was the birth of the state of Israel. Not an accident. So as we're correcting this calendar, putting godliness into those first 2,000 years, the birth of Abraham, which was probably the greatest event that says, Bihi Boram, when he created them with the small hay, which is the word Avraham, that the whole world was created for Abraham. 
for the fact that he would acknowledge that there's a God in the world, let people know, and spread God's name throughout the world. So why the year 2018? Why is that so special? Because the real next great event in history that occurred, and again, to Abraham, to Abram Levino, was an event called the Bris Bein Hapsarim, the covenant between the parts, where Abraham had a vision with God. Some say it was in a vision, some say it was an actual event, but either way, where he split animals and walked between them, and that was when he was told that his children would be enslaved for 400 years. And this was the covenant between God and between Abraham, a major, major event in history. And that was in the year 2018. So in my mind, nothing being an accident, so does that mean that the Messiah, Mashiach, will come next year, or starting with this Rosh Hashanah, a week from now, a week and a half from now? Or is it Pesach, Passover, again when the Jews were taken out of Egypt, this coming Nisan? So I don't pretend to be a prophet and tell you that that's the case. But if you look at the signs around you, it's amazing. Yechezkel said in his prophecies that the Holy Land will blossom again like a rose. Well, it has. That during the time when the Jews were not in the land, there were 150,000 nomads. That's it. It's when the Jews came back to the land of Israel that the land has blossomed. Again, a prophecy from Yechezkel. And even, even in our political system in the United States, there's just no way in the world that President Obama was elected. It's, it's, it's just not within the teva, within nature. He was a junior senator in the state of Illinois, black, at a time when, as we see today, race relations were not so good. And yet, this black man, who walks and talks like a black man, he doesn't hide it in any way, shape, or form, and also with ties to the name and the whole thing of, of, of Islam, Reverend Wright is all of a sudden becomes an issue. Teflon, nothing sticks on him. And he goes against Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, when, when Obama ran against him, was as solid as a candidate could be. Financially, reputation-wise, family, the whole thing. There was no way in the world that a junior senator, black, was going to take down Hillary Clinton. Now, the second term is a whole different thing. Okay, he bought the election, government, this, that, and the other, okay. But not the first election. There's no way in the real world that President Obama could have been elected, and he was. What did he do for eight years? He dismantled the whole world. He turned his back on all the evil and allowed all the evil to raise its head and exist in the world freely, with no fear. No fear. Every president before him would have shut it down. He decided to let it grow and flourish. And that's why we live in the world we live in. And now, President Trump runs against Hillary again. And how two people like this could have run in the first place is unbelievable and how she could have shot herself in the foot so badly. No one was more shocked than Trump on the election night that he won. He was just having a good time. It was just an adventure. And he was having a lot of fun doing it. And the truth of the matter is he would have no problem losing. Be careful what you wish for. But again, that's miraculous. The fact that he was again able to take down Hillary. And now... What we have in the White House is someone who everyone's very confident of can push that button. So if there is going to be an Armageddon, and we hope that that's not the case, because in hindsight, when the Jews were in Babel, in Babylon, they knew they would be there for 70 years. Everyone knew. The prophecy had been stated. And somehow, some way, no one could get the years right. 
They weren't sure how to figure them. And they should have been able to, and they didn't. And they were not able to know, and just like today, we really don't know exactly when. But what we do know is the stage is set. What are the prophecies of, of the Messiah? Worldwide trouble, economic ruin, ignorance of Torah, global distress, terrorism, hatred and anger between nations, despising the word of God, children bringing parents back to Judaism, to religion, unheard of, yet it is today. It's the children doing it. Gay marriage, a breakdown of religious moral values. That would never have happened before. There's always been gays, but not as open. You're a bigot if you don't accept it. It's been forced right down people's throats. It's amazing. We say in the, in the Kaddish, which are most, one of our, our, our most sacred prayers, Bagalov is man karib, that God should bring the Messiah speedily and in its time. In its time, the year 6000. Speedily means early. The Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, he said that it is the time of the Messiah. And when he said that, why? Because look around at all these signs. If you had to describe the world today, one word, the word is speed. Everything is happening uh, get faster and faster and faster. And what does a Jew do on Erev Shabbos? He runs. The world is an Erev Shabbos. The world is running towards its destiny. And we're part of that. And there can be a trepidation. But truth of the matter is, we, we have to believe that God is a benevolent father. And we can hope and pray that World War II and the whole war that went on and the, and the killing out of the Jews in the concentration camps, that that was that final war. However, you should know that we think there will be a battle between Gog and Amogog. I've never heard the word Mogog used in Hebrew or any place else. Well, guess what? In Korean, Mogog means the United States of America. It is a Korean word. So, what do we pray for? We're at the threshold of Rosh Hashanah. And the truth of the matter is most people pray for money. Some people pray for health. What you need to pray for, just pray for Mashiach. Because all the things that you want, all the things that you need, because in the end, what the Messiah will bring is an era of peace, of health, no death, of nations getting along. Will there be a moment in between of difficulty? It's possible. But you have to think of a, a, of a woman giving birth. Probably the, most, the toughest time that she goes through is just before that child is born. And the next moment is the greatest feeling she'll ever have. So what you have sometimes in order to get to that pinnacle of joy, one has to go through a moment of difficulty. And again, as I said, I don't pretend to know that that's the case. But the table is set. What if Mashiach doesn't come next year? Our loss. But at least if you're listening to what I say, we start to get our spiritual house in order. You can't lose a thing. Because that's what we need to do anyways. We need to sweep the floors. We need to clean up the beds. We need to make sure all those things that are broken are fixed. We need to do the best we can to make sure that our house is in order so that if this is the time for him to come, that he'll be welcomed. And if it's not the time, that we should pray that the time comes soon. So when you pray this year, forget about all the things that you specifically want. Just pray for two things. We know that the Shekhinah, divinity of God, is in exile with us and is in pain. Pray that the Shekhinah no longer has to be in pain. And that the Messiah comes, Mashiach comes, and that he ushers in this era of peace and tranquility, of goodness for all men. And may God bless us all. Have a great, happy, and healthy New Year to you and your families. Thank you for coming.